Um, thank you everybody for coming. Um, so you've written your novel and congratulations on that. That's a mighty accomplishment. So now that you have, uh, wouldn't you like to see it published? And I'm gonna get some, take this out just, okay. And so now we're gonna talk about queries. We're only gonna talk about fiction uh, because there are different criteria for nonfiction or uh, picture books or uh, audio books, things like that. So um, I'm just gonna talk about fiction books today and agents. Are you, are you guys seeing that little screen sharing button in there? Yes, Hi. no, no. There, maybe it's up, okay. We're gonna, I'm gonna discuss about why to get a literary agent, how to find the right literary agent, the process of querying an agent, the right approach for querying an agent, a query letter and how to craft one, and what not to do when querying an agent. So why get a literary agent? And I like to think of it this way. You have your manuscript and you've done the hard heavy lifting. If you can get it in the hands of a good agent, the good agent will find the optimal publisher for you and you don't have to sort through hundreds of publishers and their preferences and um, how uh, ethical they are and so forth. The agent does all of that work for you. And so it's, I think, imperative to go through a literary agent. So the agent basically is the gatekeeper. The literary agent negotiates with the publisher to get the best possible match for your book in its genre specialty, the distribution path, foreign rights, movie rights, electronic rights, merchandise rights, which most of us don't think of, but think of every little child you saw in a Spider-Man costume or that had a My Little Pony doll. Those are all merchandise rights and somebody's making money off of those. So it's, and then of course, actual cash money and royalties. So, and there's many more rights, but those are the main ones. So your literary agent finds the optimal match with the publisher to get the best deal for your book. And okay, sorry, I, this is gonna mess up the recording. Um, okay, when the agent succeeds, you succeed as well. Now there's something called the AAR, which is the Association of Authors Representatives. This is the professional organization for literary agents. And um, it's optimal that if you can find an agent that's a member of AAR, you know they subscribe to very ethical standards that are um, uh, throughout the industry. So it's always good to see if you can find a literary agent that's a member of AAR. And just so you know, yes, while the literary agent does a lot of work, here's what they get, and this is how they earn their living. Uh, this is just a standard typical uh, commission, but each contract is unique, but these are sort of the standard rates. Literary agents will get about a 15% commission on domestic royalties, 20% on foreign sales and translations, 15 to 20 from television deals and screenplays. And reputable literary agents do not charge money to review your query submission or your manuscript. And this is very important because anyone can call themselves an agent. And uh, I read a, an anecdote about someone who called themselves a literary agent and put up a big website and charged money for people, hey, send me your manuscript and I'll get it into the publisher's hands, et cetera. And what they did, they had, they had authors pay them and send them um, 
hard copy manuscripts all printed out, which we know is expensive, they chunk about 10 of them in a box or 20 of them in a box and go set it down on the doorstep of a publishing house and then tell the each author that they'd submitted it to a publisher. Well, of course, none of them ever got a response because this is not an ethical approach. So um, just beware when you're looking for an agent. So how do you find the right literary agent? First step, make sure your novel is finished. They don't want to hear a proposal. They don't want to hear a, well, I'm thinking about concept. They want it spit polished and perfect before they even look at it. So they know if you've got the right stuff for them to invest their time and energy in. Um, and that's really important. You can get the attention of an agent, but if they start reading your manuscript and it's full of errors, typos, and half finished thoughts, then they're just gonna forget it. Okay, the best advice I can give is go to querytracker.net. And it's a website. When you click on it, it will look like this. This is a screenshot of the first page. Now, as you can see, there's a menu of items here. Um, click on the agents one, which is the first button. They are trying to get you to join. You can join here, you can join here. They want you to become a member. Honestly, I have never done that because you can get 99% of what you need for free off of this site without having to give up your information in exchange, which anymore is getting to be a hot commodity. So go to the querytracker.net, click on agents. This is the first page and you'll see it's page one of 22. And if you scroll down, we're again on page one of 22, they start listing all of these agents in alphabetical order by the initial of the name of the agency. So starts out with numbers and then it starts with letter A agencies that start with A. So let's say, oh, and, and over here, uh, query methods. This means they're not accepting queries at this time. This is the nationality. Um, mostly US, Canadian, and British. I did see one New Zealand one once. Um, so they're not accepting queries. This means they accept them on an electronic form, which you can find. Um, and this one means they will accept a query by email. So if you have a preference, you can already screen some of the agents out right here. So I like to do email. So let's say I wanted to query Amy Jamison. I don't know anything about Amy. I don't know if she's gonna be a match for my book, but here's how I find out. I click on Amy and then this page comes up and it's got her name, the name of the agency, the agency's nationality, and it's got the website of their agency, Twitter. Now she is not an AAR member, so take note of that. But frequently you will find in the large literary agencies where they have quite a few agents, the principals are members of AAR. The associates are not. So they don't have to spend all that dues money on every single person, but they still abide by the ethical rules of the AAR. So that's something to investigate. Um, and then again, they do take queries on email and on an online form. If you clicked on this online form, it would come up and you could start filling out the query. But you don't want to do that yet because you still don't know anything about Amy. So what you do, you click on her website. If the website isn't listed there, you've already got the name of her company, then just do a Google search of that company and you'll get her agency's website. So let's say we click on Amy's A plus B works.com. And here's what we're going to find out. Go to her web page. We're going to check on her bio. Does she specialize in my genre or does she only do horror stories or children's lit? 
or historical novels or whatever, cookbooks, you'll find out everything in their website. Find the recent deals they've struck for other authors. Is this somebody who's a hard worker? Do, are they doing some good stuff? Are they, do they have any best sellers that they've represented? Uh, do they offer other services in-house? And by that, um, big agencies with multiple members have, uh, I've seen them with dedicated staff who do nothing but negotiate film rights or who do nothing but negotiate foreign rights. So there are you know, law attorneys on board. So there are uh, big agencies can have a whole lot of in-house expertise all at your disposal if you work with just one of their agents or associates. Small agencies, on the other hand, do not have all of those specialties in-house, but they are hungrier. So they work individually closer with you um, and put their effort in, in, your, in your book and representing your book. So you have to decide um, who you think you want to represent your book. And they will also always tell you the response time on this website. Um, and we'll look at some samples here pretty soon. And then always, always there are submission requirements. Each one is unique. And as I've been sending in queries, they're all over the place. <laughs> if you don't follow their requirements, they're not going to look at your query. They wrote those there for a reason, so pay attention. They usually will include some combination of a query letter, a, a synopsis, your writing credentials and bio, and a sample of this book, either the first 10, first 20, first 50 pages, the entire manuscript, or sometimes no sample. They just want the query and then they'll decide. So some variation of those, but each one follow it to the letter, whatever their specific requirements are. Here's a sample requirement number one. Now this is from a big agency. And I just copied this off their website. Uh, for fiction, send an informative description, a brief synopsis in the first 10 pages. Include the sample pages in the body of the email. We'll talk about that in a moment. For nonfiction, an informative description, a full outline in the first 10 pages. For picture books, an informative description, a full outline, and a picture book dummy, and at least one full color sample. And attach a picture book dummy as a PDF, et cetera. And here's where you send it to the individual agent. So again, this is a big agency. They have multiple agents. You pick one and send it to that person. And then here's what they say. Due to the volume of submissions received, please note that we cannot respond to every query. We shall contact you. Basically, they should put the word only in there, only if we wish to pursue your submission. So be prepared to never hear back from half of these queries. <laughs> Here's sample requirements number two. Now this is from a one person, very small agency. And honestly, this is the most comprehensive requirement uh, list I've seen. For fiction, query first via email, focusing on major plot points and character conflict interaction. Also include your bio and any publishing background or literary awards. If interested, I will ask for the following. So if you get through stage one and they contact you, then she's gonna want original query letter, one page synopsis of book, one page bio. Okay, so far so good. But then she also wants your marketing plan, two to five pages. I've never seen that before, but she wants you to do some of the work. Professional literary media endorsements if available. Again, she wants you to do a lot of the work. Competitive analysis of six, comparable current novels include two to five cents description of how your novel stands out. She wants to see what genre you think your book is in. And by uh, telling her comparable works, 
then she can pinpoint what niche market to go after. <clears throat> and then she wants your sample chapter for 75 pages. I typically respond to queries within the week they arrive, practical manuscripts within six weeks of receipt. Most of the queries I've submitted say between eight and 12 weeks for a response. And if you haven't heard by then, they're not interested. So that's a long follow-up time, but uh, just follow the requirements that they ask for. Personally, I don't think I'm gonna to submit to this one person agency because I, I don't think I'm ready to do all of those steps yet. Okay, query letters are crucial. I took a, a Writer's Digest course and paid good money to learn all of this, but you can actually find most of it on the internet. Uh, just Google how to write a query letter. But I've kind of boiled it down and summarized to make it easy, I think. So here, here goes, write a professional letter, not a cutesy letter. Query agent should make the agent Query letter should make the agent want to read more of your manuscript. Query letters should be no longer than 275 words on one page. And that is the hard part, and we'll get to that in a minute. Submit only personalized queries. No dear sir or madam. A query letter should contain the hook, the book, and the cook. That's what they call it. And we're going to talk about each one of those. Okay, keeping in mind you only have 275 pages to work with for all three of these things. The hook opens with a one sentence, intelligent, intriguing hook. No rhetorical questions. They do not want anywhere, anywhere in your query rhetorical questions. They don't want you to open with. What did Lisa Montgomery see when she accidentally opened her stepfather's laboratory door? You know, you may think that's a great hook. They hate that stuff. They don't want rhetorical questions. And I'll tell you what they do want. So just be sure, no, no rhetorical questions. But do tell what the main character wants and the consequences if he or she doesn't get it. And we'll see some samples of this in a bit. In other words, you set up a little bit of tension with the hook. Do not use first person here. Don't say, hi, I'm Lisa Montgomery, and I'm gonna tell you in my book, in this book, what I found when I opened my stepfather's laboratory door. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't give away the ending in the query letter. That's what you have a synopsis for. Just set up the tease and set up the tension. And it's, it's going to make the agent want to read more. And that's what you're trying to do. Focus on the character, not the world of the character. And have an OMG moment of some sort. Uh, and we'll talk about that. And you get to the book. State the book's title and word count. Now that seems obvious, but um, agents and publishers have specific word counts they want in books. And for you to know that means you can fashion your manuscript accordingly. Just let the agent know so they can work with you. And um, these are just some FYI things about word counts for different types of books. Although for adult fiction, uh, 70,000 to 120,000, I was told by one publisher that they really prefer that it stays under 100,000 because above that they have to add a bunch more, uh, it's, it's a bunch more labor with the printing process and it's additional cost. <clears throat> so optimally around 100,000, between 90 and 100,000, something like that. Children's fiction, shorter, young adult novels, 50,000 to 70,000 words, so you get the idea. But you want to put the book's title and the book's word count in your query letter. Include, again, comparable titles, plural. You want at least two. I've never seen anybody ask for six like that other lady did, but at least two of recent. And they want, they want recent books that have been 
uh, published reasonable and relevant books in your genre. So again, that gives them an idea of what kind of manuscript yours is and how well it might sell. And that tells them if they're gonna put their time and effort into representing it. Tell what audience this book will appeal to. For example, young adult ages 14 to 18. And then the cook, which is you. State your writing credentials, any other books you've published, very short bio. Include your email and contact info. <coughs> Excuse me. Keep writing. The agent will want to know that your next book is in the pipeline. So maybe they really like this and they're going, hmm, maybe I can get a series out of this. Or maybe there's um, a lead character that will develop into follow-up books and so forth. So that's important for an agent to know. Keep in mind also make sure the premise of your book sounds unique. Include specifics that make your manuscript stand out. Focus on giving the agent an impression of what your novel is like, but not all the details. Don't, <laughs> I can't say this enough, don't make exaggerated claims like this is going to be the next bestseller or it would make a great movie. Now you may think it, may, it would make a great movie, but don't say that. The agents hear that all the time and that's for them to decide. So they get turned off by those kinds of things. So don't, don't put that in there. But do mention if you are including the sample pages that the agent's specific requirements have mentioned. But, and this is very, 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 very important, do not put anything in as an attachment. It all has to go in the body of the email because if it's an attachment, it could contain spam and they will just delete it without opening. So no attachments ever. Finally, check for any weak language misspellings or grammatical howlers. Thank the agent. And as you're writing queries, sit down and do 10 to 15 of them in a, over a day or two. Do them at once, tailor them to the specific agent. Remember, no dear sir or madam. And the reason again, you send 10 to 15, 15 out is because you're gonna to have to wait eight weeks to get a response or not. So you wanna, you wanna cover the field with a lot of queries. Um, to see if some of them stick. And then be patient, be patient, be patient, be really patient. So we'll look at some examples of query letters. There are more on the internet. Um, I am purposely not talking about how to write a synopsis and things like that, because you can also find those on the internet or I'm not talking about contracts because that's a very complex subject. So I'm just kind of sticking with queries. And here's a few sample query letters. I've got three. I copied these off the internet. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about them. Dear Andrea, I'm seeking representation for my novel, People Who Knew Me and Wanted to Reach Out to see if you'd be interested in taking a look. Okay, a nice introductory sentence. And now she gets into the hook. On September 11, Emily Morris is lazing in the bed of her lover playing hooky while he goes off to work at the World Trade Center office they share when the towers collapse along with the affair she's been using to escape her unhappy marriage, she sees an opportunity. By September 12, everyone in her life thinks she is dead. By the next week, she is living a new life in California, pregnant and alone. Okay, stop there. She set up a hook. She's got an oh my God moment. Um, she's used the third person voice. She's introduced the main character all in that one paragraph. So that's all the hook. Now there's a little bit more of the hook in the second paragraph. People who knew me weaves back and forth between the present 14 years after 9-11 and the past. 
When Emily is faced with a devastating diagnosis, she must revisit the past and make peace, not just with those in her current life, but with the people who knew her in the life left behind. She hasn't told us too much about the book, a little bit about how it's structured, but then she goes on and goes into the cook part. I am a 34-year-old novelist residing in Southern California. After completing the Master's of Professional Writing at USC, I went into career, et cetera. I've been contributed to, and there's different magazines and selected for America's Next Author Anthology, was featured author at West Hollywood Book Fair, and here's her personal website. Now, she does tell the, the title of the book, but she never says the word count, and she never says what genre it is. Whoops. So those are things that she is missing in this letter that the agent would want to know. But she did contain it on one page. Okay, here's another sample letter I got off the internet. It's, it's so long, I have to do it in two screens. So I will start. Dear Michael, it was a pleasure to meet you at the Las Vegas Writers Conference. So it's very personal now. Not only did I learn a lot, but left steadfast and inspired. Thank you for sitting down with me to hear the pitch for my historical novel, Aspen's Way. I've attached the first 35 pages as you requested and included the query below and look forward to hearing from you. And then there's the query with a hook. It's 1906 and as an Ojibwe Indian stands trial for the murder of a white man. And I won't read the whole thing, but it's, it's a hook. It talks about the setup, who is um, the main character, um, a little bit about the setting and what the, the plot is. And there's sort of an, oh my God moment in there. And then she says, told in an interwoven narrative, Aspen's Way is a work of upmarket historical fiction complete at 99,000 words. The story was a finalist in the 2014 Pitch Wars competition. My short fiction appears in, et cetera. And then she gives her writing credentials. Thank you for your consideration. So this is a pretty complete query letter. Um, it talks about what genre, gives the, the word count and the title, gives the writer's credentials, um, and it does the teaser with the, the hook. And it's personalized. And she thanks the agent, okay. Third letter, and this, there would be an actual agent's name in there. And, starts right in, right out of the gate with the hook. Rose Gold Watts believed she was sick for 18 years. She thought she needed the feeding tube, the surgeries, the wheelchair. Turns out her mom, Patty, is a really good liar. Well, that's kind of an interesting hook. And she goes on and tells us a little more about the circumstances and a little bit more. Only one Watts can get her way. So she's taken up half the letter with the hook. Um, which may or may not be good. Then she gets to the book, Mother May I, the title, 87,000 words, is a suspense novel genre told from, and she gives the voice in two timelines. My book would appeal to readers of Holly Land's Good Me, Bad Me, and Gillian Flynn's Sharp Objects. So she's got the two comparables, and that's the first of that that we've seen in these three letters. And that's always important. My short fiction has been published, et cetera. And she, got, she has her writing credentials. Thank you for your time and consideration. So see those different elements in the letters. You need to include as many of those as you can because those are the things agents want to know. So any questions? I have several, Ruth. Okay. <laughs> uh, number one, how in the world do you keep track of all these submissions? Uh, do you have an Excel spreadsheet on them? <laughs> I probably should, but I've just actually written them down by hand on a piece of paper that looks like this. <laughs> oh, boy. And okay. um, I write the date, the name of the specific agent, the name of their agency, and what their criteria are like eight weeks, 12 weeks or whatever. And then when they, when they send me the nice rejection, I put no. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
so far I haven't had any takers, but I've read that you need to send in at least 100. Wow. And yeah. have you seen anywhere where you really ought to have like two or three books already out there before agents will even take a look at you? I, I can't answer for them because I don't know. Um, the book industry is really changing right now and then COVID has changed it even further. And these are people trying to earn a living, you know, to put bread on the table for their families. So they want um, things that are marketable, which means there's a lot of pulp fiction out there. Uh, if people are doing like sci-fi, there's a big market for sci-fi and fantasy right now, big market. Um, so if you have one of those hot genres, probably more likely to get you a publishing deal than literary fiction. So, but I don't know the answer to your question. I would also bet that like that one letter that you had from uh, the woman who was a, the daughter of a uh, Canadian Indian woman. I yeah. mean, that stuff has been in the news. So what journalists yes. call a news peg <clears throat> is going to get you, uh, you know, better chances right. of landing an agent, I would guess. Right, and that's why you should personalize the letter um, in your own bio <clears throat> and, and to the to the agent himself or herself. If you'll stop your screen share, we'll open it up for other questions, unless you've got more. No, this questions. is the wrap up slide. Time to start querying. Okay. What are you finding, Ruth? What are you finding different when you're doing query letters regarding your poetry books? What am I finding? What? What are you finding that's different in the process when you are marketing your poetry books? Well, I, uh, hold on, I'm gonna stop this. Did you stop the screen share, Ann? No, I didn't. You, oh. you have to stop it on your end. Okay, there we go. Um, I am not seeking an agent for poetry. Uh, I don't think there's, an agent right now, unless you are the poet laureate or the lady who read the presidential inaugural poem, there's probably not too much uh, that an agent is gonna find lucrative representing your book. So they're not gonna waste their time. But I am trying hard to market my novel, <clears throat> so. Okay, thank you. And I am not an expert on querying. <laughs> I, uh, I took one course, which was very helpful. And um, I'm finding it that I, that enabled me to structure my query letter much more concretely and focused with better focus to what I think they want. So you did a forward. super job of, of tying all this learning that you've done together, I think. Great. Great well, thank, thank you, Ann. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. The whole uh, topic of the writing area that uh, uh, I don't think I was ever aware of that uh, is certainly more complicated, but it's good to see you've organized something here uh, to share with us on this. Thank you, Ruth. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for listening. Uh, before we go on, I have one question. I noticed that. Um, it was emphasized that everything be put into the body of the email. Um, does the email reach a point where it's too big to go? Mm. I have uh, on my email, I think I have uh, a limit of 25 what, nice. megabytes or something. And if you're sending mm. that many pages, of your manuscript um, and all of this other information in the body, um, it, it does that work? So far, I haven't had any bounce backs, and I uh, my novel is eighty nine thousand page eighty nine thousand words, not pages, words long, which is about two hundred and fifty pages. Um, 
<clears throat> and it hasn't had any problem going through when I paste it in the body of the email. And sometimes I also, in addition to that, sometimes I also, then I also paste the query letter and the synopsis and whatever else they ask for. So I haven't had any problems. I think as long as pictures aren't involved, you'll, you'll never have an issue. <laughs> well, again, um, the submission requirements for picture books are different. So you just have to find the agent who handles picture books and read their requirements and they will tell you what they want. They don't want you to send the whole book. Oh, so Ruth, this is Audrey. Like if it's a children's book, certainly you'd want us, you wouldn't send the whole book. I guess you wouldn't, you, that's, you don't have enough of a hook if you give them everything. Um, I have never submitted a children's book query. So mm -hmm. I would, and so I, I don't even look at agents who say they want children's books. So mm -hmm. I haven't followed up with their specific requirements. Well, um, this is a, a general question though. So like if you, like with a children's book, I intend to market uh, dolls and creatures to go with it. So I would want to have an agent that has those kind of connections. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? The merchandise, yeah. Yeah. So like, it, do you like, is there like a, any kind of a place where you can look and see who does that kind of thing? Um, <laughs> there may be, I don't know. The answer yeah. is I don't know. I, I have confined all of my agent searches to Query Tracker. If you go online and Google find a literary agent, you will get good agents. You will also get unscrupulous agents. Uh, yeah. And um, that's, that's the tough part. I mean, if they ask you for money, they're unscrupulous. Now, mm -hmm. I will say that some legitimate agencies, if they read your sample pages and like your book, but maybe it's not quite ready, they might mm -hmm. recommend an editor or a polisher, and then you will have to pay some money for that. But that's not the same thing. Um, they're trying to help you. Yeah. So that's not the same thing at all as, well, yeah, send me your book and some money and I'll see if I can get it into the hands of the publisher and I'll just toss right. it on the porch, it. call it good, you know. Amy, did you have something I, to add? I would say um, for children's books, especially paperback or um, picture books, the um, <laughs> The agents will have some, some of them want only the text and they want to match you with an illustrator. Oh. And um, the illustrators who work in, in picture books send um, little postcards with some of their artwork on it. And the, the agent will keep a file of that and look and see what they think is, is a good fit. Um, if you are both the author and illustrator, that's when they're talking about a dummy to send them. But if it's only the text that you are sending them, um, because it's so short, uh, you know, I think 800 words is the max or 600. Um, so you need to, again, look at each agent and make a determination that way. You can get a lot more information at the SCBWI workshop, which is the Society for Children's Book Authors and Illustrators. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's great. And I don't know anything about that. So that's great. Carol? One quick question. I'm not writing, so this has nothing to do with me, but I helped my husband Max write right, uh, you know, promote. And he wrote things that were very unusual and very hard to categorize. That didn't keep him from being noticed and getting awards. Uh, would he just have to have done some serious research and, and figure a way to fit this into a category before he sent it to a professional? I think it's tough when you don't fit a recognized genre. And I'm, I'm in that predicament right now, actually. <clears throat> um, plus, because the publishing industry is changing so much. So I don't have a good answer for you. Okay. I think, again, people 
that got caught up in the pandemic are trying to make money, they're probably sticking with uh, known successful genres right now where there's a known market and uh, perhaps are a bit risk adverse right now. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm just speculating, but that would be my thought. The one time I ever talked to an agent was at the Tall Grass Writers Workshop in Emporia. And I think I've told this at this group before, but I took a, a new manuscript Max had just finished toward the end of his career in and I actually had a meeting with an agent. I pulled out the manuscript and he glanced at it and he said, that book's not nearly long enough. And I said, well, thanks anyway. And I got it and walked out. Yeah, that's what I mean. Each one has their own criteria. So it's it's just keep trying and keep trying and be patient and be patient till you find the match. Somebody whose interest you you, you know, can catch and they like your writing. So good luck. <laughs> yeah, I know. Good questions, everybody. Yeah. Okay. I hope this was helpful. Oh, extremely, anyway, extremely. You can find a lot more, a lot more information on the internet, but this was kind of a summary of how to you start. Know, one thing that's interesting is that there are new genres being added. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't assume that the BISAC codes that you have to put in when you, you know, publish your book, if you're self-publishing, are going to be the same because they're not. They're oh, kind there's of, like kind 10 of kinds of science fiction. Oh, know? yeah. Steampunk, which I don't even know what that is, and this and that, and, <laughs> and mm. yeah, yeah, and there's all kinds of horror stuff, and then there's vampire stories, and yeah. you know, yeah. lots and lots of genre subcategories. So, yeah, yeah, true. Okay, well, thank you again, Ruth. Really appreciate it, and I'm going to stop this recording.